Good morning, CLC. Whether you're online or in person, we invite you all to stand up as we celebrate what the Lord's doing in our lives. Fallen and fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost, and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. In my mind says I'm not good enough. God, you're enough for me. I've decided. going to teach you guys a new song. It's called uh, 1,000 Names, and it essentially describes the nature, the characteristics of who our God is, and we pray that this song will be a blessing to you um, in the sense that whatever circumstance that you are going through, that there is a name for God out there that um, will give you that reassurance. Financially, He is your provider. Any mental, emotional, physical healing, He is your healer. He is Yahweh, God forever beginning and the end. There's so many names to encompass who our God is. So I pray that again that the psalm will bless you. We're going to teach you the chorus. I know you by a thousand names and you deserve every single one. You've given me a million ways to be amazed on what you've done and I am lost in wonder. At all you do, I know you by a thousand names, and I 
enemies can. You still do miracles, and you will do what you say. For you're the same God now as you've always been. Your spirit breaking out, your kingdom moving in. Your defense around that is gonna be. Wonder-working God, not just way back then, but right here in our midst today, He is working miracles. He is answering prayers. We are so thankful for that. In fact, we have some people that want to express their thankfulness, some people expressing answers to prayer, things like passing exams, people thanking God for new jobs and opportunities, thankful for God's provision in their life. That is the God that we serve. He doesn't just answer prayer sometimes or when he feels like it. He hears and answers our prayer. So you know what we're gonna do this morning, church? We're gonna lift up some needs of people right here in this house. People are sending these in to us week after week because there are very real needs here in our family at this church. So we have people who are looking for all kinds of things. People looking for friendships, companionship. That's so very real now, coming out of this COVID world where relationships were just all turned upside down. We have people looking for help with their studies, prayer for successful surgeries, life transformation. That is the very business that God is in, is it not? People looking for freedom. I don't, that could be from so many things, addiction, depression, depression, anxiety, so many needs in this church. Can we do something together this morning? If you're willing, would you lift your hand up as we agree together for answers to these prayers? Thank you, Jesus, that we don't pray. We don't pray over a tomb. We don't pray over a dead body, a God of ancient history. I thank you that we pray with the power of an empty grave an empty cross. I thank you, Lord God, you're not there anymore, that you are in our midst, that you are alive and well here in our midst, answering our prayers this morning. So we lift them up to you. We expect answers to our prayers this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that you are meeting people's needs, that you are setting people free. I thank you, Lord God, for healing and restoration of relationships, healing and restoration of bodies. We thank you, Lord God, that you hear and answer our prayers this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I see you taking ground.
this morning. It is so great to be gathered here with you this morning, here amongst family. Welcome home. I really, that's really our heart cry at this church, that you will find a place that you can call home. For so many of us, that's what it is. For my own family, this is home. This is a great place to be. So we are so glad that you are here this morning. Uh, if you're joining us online, we are so glad that you've taken that step. Maybe you're on the other side of the world somewhere watching us. We are so glad that you are a part of our church family this morning. Uh, for those of us who are gathered here this morning, we want to take a minute, an actual minute, exactly 60 seconds, and I'm going to be timing you guys. I want you to take the next minute, get out of your seat, welcome some people. This is our one minute mingle. Make some friends. Come on. That's awesome. You guys are great. No cheating. No cheating on that one. Awesome. Well, we are so glad you're here this morning. Um, if this is your first time joining us, um, could you do something for us? There's a card. It looks like this. It's on the seat back in front of you. There's also actually, uh, if you want to be a little more uh, technologically advanced, there's also a QR code there for you. Same difference either way. Uh, but if you can fill that out, that's our Connect With Us card. We just would like to get to know you. We would like to know a little bit more about you. We'd like to invite you out to our, our uh, starting point. You get a chance to, to meet our pastors and get to know a little bit more about who we are as a church, where we've come from, where we're going. Um, we also want to hook you up with a, uh, a, a free coupon at our cafe out here for a free drink of your choice. So uh, please do fill that out or scan that QR code. We would love it if you do that. Also, if uh, you want to give this morning, just a, a reminder, there is a giving station basically directly behind this wall here, uh, out in the hallway. So if you want to give, you can go there and do that. Um, we are just going to take a moment here and watch church news, and it's going to let you know what's going on here at Calgary Life Church. Hey everyone and welcome to church. My name is Ben. And I'm Alex. And we are so happy to have you join us today. And if today is your first time here, we would love to get to know you. And we can do that by just filling out the connect card that's on the seat back in front of you. And in doing so, we would love to give you a gift, which is a coffee at our cafe. We believe that tithes and offering are a key part of our worship. And so if you're here today and you would like to partner with CLC, then we would love to share a couple of the ways that you can do so. You can do so in person by going to the giving station that's located out in our hallways, or if you'd like to do it online, here's a quick video on how to do so. Your faithful giving helps impact others with the love and hope of Christ. To make a secure gift online, go to calgarylifechurch.com slash give. You can also give via the CLC app. Enter your gift amount and press next. If you aren't logged in or don't have an account, you can sign in or continue as a guest. Fill out your card details, then you're done. Setting your gift to reoccurring is a huge blessing to the church as it allows us to be more intentional in moving our vision forward. Thank you for your generosity and commitment to the ongoing ministry of Calgary Life Church. Next Sunday night, we're so excited to be hosting our next young adult service. We're going to be featuring special guest speaker, Brandon Stewart, and it's going to be a night that you don't want to miss. So let your friends know, come on out, and we can't wait to see you there. On October 31st, we are so excited to be hosting our annual Kids Halloween Party. This is going to be a night of fun, games, candy, and more. We want to invite you to come join us, bring your friends and your family with you, as well as bring some candy donations to CLC Kids to help us stock up for the event. 
on November 5th, ladies. Put the date in your calendar because we have our next sisterhood event. It's gonna be a great time for you or any of the other ladies in your world. For more information, head to the church website. On November 13th, we're excited to host our next baby dedications. If you are a new parent in the church and would like to have your child dedicated, then this is a great opportunity to do so. You can sign up for the baby dedication out at the Connect Center in the hallway or through the CLC website. And are you passionate about creating a welcoming space and environment for people to create friends? If so, starting a Connect group could be for you. If you're interested in starting a Connect group, all you gotta do is email the church at hello at calgarylifechurch.com and we'll get back to you with the steps on how to do so and all the information you would need. If you ever want to re-listen to one of the messages here at CLC, you can do so on Apple Music or Spotify. And to stay up to date with everything going on, you can follow us on social media, download the app, and before you leave today, don't rush out. Head over to the cafe, have a coffee, maybe a croissant, maybe a cookie, maybe buy somebody behind you a croissant. Who knows? You can meet a great friend. See you. All right. Good morning, everybody. How are you? So good to see you. Isn't it a beautiful day? It's like everything is right in the universe. Flames have won two in a row. Oilers lost. God is good. Awesome. How many watched that game last night? That was a great game. That was a great game. I wish the other two periods were like the first, but that's okay. A win is a win. And uh, hey, so great. So glad to have you. I, we got a real treat in store for you tonight. Over 30 years ago, uh, Madeline and I, well, Madeline's probably known this couple longer than I, but uh, we got uh, from our, all the way from Sweden, uh, Carl and Monica, Carl Gustav and Monica Severin. Carl, uh, they're, they're almost on the verge of being on the 50-50 club, being married 50 years and in ministry 50 years. So they're at 49. So next year, they'll be that one step closer, be part of that 50-50 club. You know, and Carl, Carl said to me, he says, you got to take care of your old friends. And I said, why is that? He says, it takes so long to make them. And Carl is one of those guys that, you know, I remember that one time I was supposed to go to Siberia in the middle of winter to preach, and it was like 65 below, and I went into the office when we lived in Sweden to pick up my tickets, my passport, the itinerary, and I kind of had the sniffles, you know? And then when, by the time I got back to the apartment, Carl's on the phone, and he goes, Anthony, were you in the office today? I said, yeah, yeah, I picked up my ticket. He goes, you have the sniffles. And I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I just was up in northern Sweden. I got a little bit of cold. It'd be fine. It's on its way out. He goes, I cancel your trip. Cancel. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, if you go to Siberia with the, the sniffles, you're going to come back in a box. And he said, you are more valuable than what you contribute. We're going to work together. And I, I never felt, I tell you what, as much as I was disappointed, I wanted to go to Siberia. Come on, that's a cool place to go. Get it? It's a cool place. See what I did there? See what I did there? And, uh, you know, it was like, he cared more for me than what I was going to contribute. And I tell you, that is, I, I had not experienced that before. And, uh, you know, in a ministry level. And Carl has been, and his wife, they've been pioneers going into the, the Soviet Union before the days of Glasnost and Perestroika, before the walls came down, pioneering the gospel. And today there are, there are thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of believers and, and hundreds of churches in former East Europe and Russia because of what this man and his wife, what they pioneered. And you're going to hear some great stories, great preaching. So could we stand to our feet and give a great Calgary Life Church welcome all the way from Uppsala, Sweden, Carl Gustav Severin. Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. Well, I also heard that Calgary won yesterday. Because you have Swedish people playing there, probably. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So happy to be here. My wife, Monica, and I, as you heard, we have been married for 40, 50 years. Next year, and I, we have five children. We have 12 grandchildren. And soon, 13 grandchildren. So we hope for 25. I don't know. Uh, but of course, I was here in this church, it feels like 1,000 years ago now. I was here when you started, and when you're in that Polish building, at, and we had a water baptism here many years ago. I remember it was in the beginning of this church. And to see now how work has been growing so good, it's so joyful for us to see this and be a part of this service today. Um, 
as you know, we, we live in Sweden, but I've been traveling in the Soviet Union over 30 years. So I di we just came back from Ukraine. And as you know, there, there are war there now, and we heard us alarm, bomb alarms every day. But the Christians are not giving up. They have decided they're going to save their country, and they're going to continue to rebuild the country when this war is over. Uh, I'm going to go to Moscow in a few weeks also and preach there, uh, and that's going to be interesting. Uh, uh, Putin, we hope we'll be put out, but we will still find out. <laughs> there, are, there are many things going on there, but in our church in Moscow, the, the revival is there. Over 80 people getting saved every weekend now in the church in Moscow, even when there's war. So, so we see revival everywhere. And I, let me just tell you something. Don't let the devil lie to you say there's not going to be a revival. This is our finest hour now to preach the gospel all over the world. This is our finest time to reach people with the gospel. This is the best time to reach Calgary people with the gospel. This is the time our finest hour is coming now. So I, I'm going to preach you a very simple message here today. You know everything already with such a pastor you have here. Um, but you know, there is a word that has been, came to me at the beginning of this year from, from the book of Hebrew. Um, and and it's, uh, it's from the book of Hebrew, 10 chapter and verse 35. It says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence or your boldness. Let's call it boldness. Like I said, which has what? Which has what? Great reward. You know, boldness is something that we, 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 we cannot take for ourselves. But the Bible says many, many, many times, be bold, be strong, be very courageous. That was what we said to Joshua in the time when he was young, to a young man who had a life before him. He didn't say, be sad, be depressed, go and hide yourself. He said, no, be bold, be strong. God loves boldness. You know, there's a story in the Bible, there's a person I like very much in the Bible, He's, his name is Peter. Have you heard about Peter? Yeah. I like Peter because he was such a bold person. Everything he did, he did 200%, but bad or good, you know. <laughs> I mean, when he rejected him, rejected Jesus totally, and when, when everything. But there was a story about him I like very much. It's when he was um, sitting in a boat together with 12 disciples, and they were, they were in the middle of the storm, and suddenly Jesus comes walking on the water. Can you imagine? Jesus was coming walking on the water, and Jesus didn't go like this. Oh, ay, 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 ay. No, 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 no. No, he just walked. Because there is never fear in Jesus, you see. He's never afraid. So hang with him. You don't have to be afraid if you hang with him. So he just walked there. And then they see him, and Peter sees Jesus coming walking, and, Jesus, and Peter gets so excited. I like Peter, he said, Jesus, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> Can I come to you on the water? Jesus didn't say his theology, well, you know, I'm the son of God. You are just little Peter. You don't go walk on water, okay? I walk on water, you don't walk on water, okay? <laughs> just make, I mean, fact is, you're too fat. You <laughs> You go down. <laughs> Jesus didn't say that. Jesus got so excited, so he screamed, Yes, come. And that's the word I have in my spirit for you today. Whatever Jesus calls you to do, don't hesitate. Run if Jesus says, Come. Because Jesus is going to let you walk on water. He's going to take steps of faith you never take before. He's going to break all the barriers. And you know what a border is? There was a border in, in Russia uh, called Russia. <laughs> and they told me, you cannot enter that border. You know what it, I enter it. I do it all the time. And when they throw me out, I turned back to that lady. I said, I'll be back. <laughs> you know what? That's life. That's how we do things. We don't, we don't quit. We don't give up. So, so Peter, he, he, he jumped into the water. And uh, I can hear his friends in the boat. Peter. Don't do this. Don't go to that church. In the miracle church. Don't, don't do that. No. Sit in the boat. Pashal, stop saying Russian. Sit in the boat. And Peter, he walked. I love Peter. 
You know, I always said that I wish there was a painter in the world somewhere, maybe this one in Calgary, who can paint this picture. Peter walking on the water. Most pictures always him sinking. I had one in my office for, for 20 years. The first thing I sat down in my office, there was Peter. <laughs> I said, what? He said, why? I removed him. <laughs> and one day I was in Ukraine and preaching in Kharkov, and the guy comes, here is your picture. Here's Peter walking on the water. So next time you come to Uppsala, Sweden, to my house, come to my house, I'll show you a picture where Peter is walking on the water. But Carl Gustav, you must be a realistic, realistic. He sank down. It's a fact. I said, yes, he sank down. But you know what? Jesus didn't say to him, bye-bye, Peter. Oh, disciples, why, why aren't we singing a hymn closer though to the, here's a young boy, he trusted Jesus and he died. No, Jesus took him by the hand. He lifted him up. He said, hey, you, you see, re, write this down 2,000 times. When you fall down, you never fall outside the hand of God. You fall inside the hand of God. Amen. Amen. I said, amen. amen. There, there, there's so much Christ. They talk about Christ. Said, Don't do this now. Be sitting still and save and save and save and save. But I have, my, when, the, when the prices go up, his blessings will go up. You're going to have food this winter. You're going to have gasoline this winter. And you're going to have what you need this winter. Your God is going to be with you this winter. So it's not a time to sit down and wait for the wind to blow over. It's time to do action. It's time to take steps of faith. It's time to dare to be bold in your prayers. Bold to pray. Praise you never prayed before. Pray, pray for healings you've never seen before. I believe you're going to see mighty, mighty miracles in this time. Amen. I know there were priests trying to scare Christians on the corona time. I didn't. Because Jesus didn't scare his disciples when they were locked in behind doors in the day of resurrection. He didn't come and say, Burr. No. He said, peace be with you. He spoke peace. He spoke hope. He spoke future. Because I have a word for you. I have thoughts about you, says the Lord, to give you hope and a future. God is thinking about us. God is thinking about our life. So today is the time to cast our cares upon him but don't cast away your boldness all the worries we carry I mean worries is the worst thing people have have you ever had worries I don't you have that in Calgary but that down in Edmonton maybe I love in Edmonton <laughs> but we have all been have you ever had a symptom in your body and you go on the internet <laughs> I did that one time I had a symptom of voice. I went on the internet. I started to surf. And my wife came in the room. And you know, the thing, when I clicked on one symptom, it, it led to another click. <laughs> and when I was there for 20 minutes, I was dying. <laughs> I was dying. And my wife comes into the room and she sees my face. What are you doing? I'm surfing on my symptoms on the internet, on Google. She said, stop that surfing. Start to surf in the Bible instead. There are many good scriptures for everything of these symptoms. See, she's closed the computer for me. I, I was happy for that. I said I was happy for that. You see, we can, we can sink when we are surfing. But you can never sink when you have your eyes on Jesus. And you know, I, what I like with, with the story with Jesus walking on the water, it's not that he sank and he lifted up, but it, that when he came up, Jesus didn't drag him like a frogman under the water like this, you know. <laughs> and put him back in the boat and said, don't ever do that again. No. He walked together with Jesus on the water. And he was the one who prayed on the day, preached on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. See, sometimes we have things we are doing, and it looks like everything is 
terrible and every, you're losing your sinking, but you are not sinking. I said, you are not sinking, hallelujah. You are sinking, you're sinking in the hand of God if you go down, but he's going to lift you up, he's going to put you again, and you're going to serve God with boldness in your future. Let's give Jesus a hand because he wants to lift up that inside of us. Amen. Every time you have been bold, have you felt there is a reward for that? Every time you take a step beyond your borders, where we have been before, every time you take a step of prayer, every time you take a step of giving, you never give that, but you take that step and you pass that border, and boldness comes into your giving. Boldness comes into your witnessing. And, and that is what is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. My wife and I, we, we grew up, as you heard, in Sweden. Madeleine is from Sweden. I can get, promise you that. And uh, in Sweden, we are not very bold, really, to nature. We are more, we are not the American style. We, you know, Americans go like, ah, they come like this, you know. But we Swedes are, Little like that. And, and <laughs> when, I, when we went to Bible school, my wife and Monica and I in, in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Kenneth Hagin Bible School there, uh, we, had, we needed a miracle every day. Because <laughs> we had no salary. We had to trust God every day. And then somebody come and say, do you want to come home to our house and, and eat the dinner? We never prayed about it. We came. We were hungry every day. <laughs> Anthony... We were hungry. So there was an old couple called Fer, Phil and her, Fer, Fern Halverson, beautiful old couple. Uh, and, and they said, take your friend, Carl Gustav, and his wife and your wife, come to us for dinner. We want to give you a really good southern dishes, blah, 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 blah. Oh, we are so happy. So we came with a car outside his house, and I saw his house. It was so beautiful. It was four meters high inside. His car was a Cadillac. My car needed prayer every day. <laughs> he had a beautiful Cadillac. We came in and the, into his house, and it was so high. The carpet was so thick, brothers, sisters. We walked like this on the carpet. <laughs> oh, wow. Expensive stuff, you know. Whoa. I looked at my wife and I said, wow, think about our carpet's home. You know, they have, they have pictures on the walls. We made our own pictures in our house in the Tulsa. We, we had no pictures. Our furniture was shaking all the time. And the, the sofa they had was plush. You just took it. Oh, and then this old man came and said, come, i show you my new car. <laughs> you had one car, yeah? Yeah, I too. A brand new came yesterday. It's in the garage. I didn't use it yet. I don't know if I need it anyhow, but and I thought, hmm, God loves some people. <laughs> so we came out and said, oh, it's an Oldsmobile, it was beautiful, and oh, I did like this, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we went back into the house again, and, and I looked upon the beautiful pictures, I walked on the nice carpets, <laughs> thought about the car, and, and then this guy says, we are a very old couple, and God has blessed us extremely. Everything we have in this house, God has given to us. I thought, ah, yeah. Lord, I have an address too. <laughs> I, I'm not jealous, but I just thank God for them. You know? And then they said, and my wife, we have been praying, if there is anything in this house that you need, Right now, I want you to take it with you home tonight. You know what I thought, brother? I need everything here. <laughs> I 
I need everything here. But I'm Swedish. You know, Marlene, how that is. So you don't say it's like, if they've been Russian, you know, I, I know Russian people. You, you, they would have said, no, no, no. We don't have to move anything. You move to my house, I stay here. <laughs> but that's Russian people. <laughs> or Ukrainians or Armenians. But we are Swedes. We are polite. And I stood there. And then I did a tremendous mistake. I went to to Monica and I said, Monica, you tell us what we need. She is not Swedish, she is double Swede. <laughs> she, and she looked long time, and then she said, oh, we need a mixer. I have still trauma with this. <laughs> Monica, we need a mixer. That we whip whipping cream for cakes. And then she said this typical Swedish, it doesn't have to be electric, it's hands fine. <laughs> oh, I stood there. I want to scream. <laughs> it was too late. They said, oh, we have a mixer, exactly one you want. And she went to the kitchen. Nothing more. Mm -mm. <laughs> On the way home, for the first time in my marriage, I needed a marriage seminar. <laughs> I was so angry. Monica was driving the car. I was sitting with the mixer like this. <laughs> wow. Both ways. <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to use it three times in one year, maybe. <laughs> Finally, I said, I couldn't hold myself. Monica, I said, why did you say mixer? We can have walked on nice carpets. We can have at least a p painting or a sofa. You know how we, how house look at mess home. In, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And she stopped the car. I never forget the exact road was 81st, 91st Street in Tulsa. And she, and she stopped in the red light and said, Hey, more car, you accused me for taking a mixer. You didn't take anything. <laughs> My friend who was with me, you know what he took? A teaspoon. I have a word for you today. I said, I have a word for you today. Be bold in your prayers. I said, be bold in your prayers. Don't, today, before we go home, we're not going to ask God for mixers and teaspoons. We're going to ask him for heathens. We're going to ask him for nations. We're going to ask, whatever you need, you can come to God with the desire you have in your heart. And I think that boldness in prayer needs to come back to the body of Christ. At least I feel that in Europe. We have been so sank down by the corona and, and people have lost hope in prayer. So many things have gone to happen and about our sickness and diseases and many, many things. It's time that the spirit of boldness comes back to the church and raise up new kind of prayers. I said new kind of prayers. We are not afraid. We are not ashamed to preach the gospel. This is our finest hour. I said, this is the finest hour. I, turned, I, I t told ba Pastor Anthony and Madeline yesterday that we have a revival home in Sweden. We have been praying for years that God shall touch, start to touch young people. And it's happening right now that thousands of young people are being touched by God. Uh, gang members, it's like Nicky Cruz types, all of them, you know. And they're coming to church, they're coming to Bible school. And I see something in them. They are bold to witness. They're bold to give out the gospel. And we see it in, when they come and they, and they, I told the story, yes, about one of them. He's, he's one of the toughest criminals we never had. When he went to the, to, but he ran away from 27 police cars and two police helicopters. Made it. But he couldn't run away from his mother's prayers. You can never run away from mama prayer. 
My mama pray, you stay. I tell you. And he got saved. He received Jesus dramatically. But he had to go to court to get 13 years in prison. In the way to the prison room, his advocate told him, don't ever admit that you did anything. Then you go to long prison. You, they don't have proof on you. And then he heard God speak to him. A new saved boy. The truth will set you free. He goes in. He, with boldness, he stands up and says, I want to confess all my all my crimes, 25 crimes he confessed. He went to every person he, he beat it and asked them for forgiveness in the courtroom and he sat down and went out and afterward came both the prosecutor and the judge and said we have never seen anything like it we will help you so you'd come a little, not so long. and he was, was free uh, he, have, he didn't have to go to prison and they paid even his Bible school and depart, apartment and salary for two years the city of Sweden and he and said, I also want to preach in Africa. Yes, you will preach in Africa. We pay the tickets for you. That boldness has rewards. He boldly confessed his sin. That's also important. When you get boldness in your life and you get things that you, you know that this is, this is what I need. I, 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 you know, the Bible talks a lot about victory and we don't use that just for victory, victory. But there is a word called victory in the Bible. And I want you to get a taste of victory this year. This year has been hard for many of us. Many of us have lost maybe family members in the corona, maybe lost many things. Some maybe lost a job. And there are tough times. We see in, in Europe now the prices go up like crazy. The war is right, right in, besides us. But when, I, when I was in Ukraine and I saw these Christians standing up, standing down in the underground in metro stations and worship God, while the bombs are falling on. They are not going to lose. They're going to win. And, and I like that. I like it so much because, you know, God knows what it is. And, and that comes to my next question. Boldness is something that you cannot take. You have to pray for it. Amen. Can we start to pray in the end of the service day? God, give me boldness to pray for sick people more, to dare to do things. You know, I... I I love to go to new nations. And many, many years ago, it was 30 years ago, I, I sat on television. I saw, I saw a, an earthquake in Armenia. Uh, Armenia is a, a country far away from, from us, but it's south of, north of Iran. Uh, 30,000 people di dead, died. And God spoke to me, go to that nation and preach gospel. I said, I don't know anyone there. He said, I didn't know anyone when I come to the earth either go so we went there I stood and cried and wept when I saw the dead people I saw the houses was gone the earthquake had destroyed the whole villages and we, I stood on the stones and I started to preach and I heard in my spirit one day you will have the biggest stadium here with 10,000 people and I went and two years later I went up to the religious affairs culture minister I said can I have the building and he signed the paper I can have the building for 10,000 people. It was fantastic. You remember, Monica, you were, you were with me. I was just going to go up. The, the was packed hall. Anthony, you, you have been many years. Like, I mean, it's a packed hall. The, there was no lights. There were 10,000 people. Maybe 12,000 people said. And I, and I felt weak like a little bird. Just left the nest. I like, like Bambi on ice, you know. If you have heard about Bambi. Have you ever been on Bambi of Ice in your life? It's fantastic, but it's terrible. And I got the message right there. Right there, and the message come. Carl Gustav Severin, there's a message from the culture minister. You are not allowed to preach here tonight. Have we promised? That's over. That's it's, it's taken in. You can only have a concert. No preaching. And I said, what do I do? I saw all the sick people. I saw the blind people, the deaf people. People were so hungry for God. And I felt something, Anthony, that you have felt many times, and all of us, the spirit of boldness. So I went up on the platform. I did something I'd never done in my whole life. I had a concert. <laughs> I said to my interpreter, you're going to sing I'm not a singer. <laughs> me, not me either. 
But the only thing we can do is to sing my, I'm going to sing my sermon. <laughs> I'm going to sing my sermon. So I, as, as she said, I have never done this before. Not me either. I said, tonight I'm going to sing Matthew 9, 35. Oh, Jesus went around doing good, healing everyone who oppressed of the devil. Oh, and if you are sick here tonight, you are not Jesus, you can receive him tonight, and you can be healed in Jesus' name. And like that for 20 minutes. And she was singing with me. So beautifully. Do you know what? Her name is Sarah. Today she is the most famous singer in Armenia. I promoted her. That's a good start. After 20 minutes, I was totally weared out. And I started singing, if you are here, you are sick, lift your hands to Jesus. He comes night now to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Be healed. Be healed. And you know what happened? People started to get healed. <laughs> the lady who had polio, you know polio? She was paralyzed. She came like this. I can move my hands. I can walk. Her, what do you call this painting women has in their faces? Make up or make down. <laughs> this, this was make down, Anthony. Everything went down. <laughs> mascara. Say mascara. You say mascara. 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 The mascara. No fera. I mean, they, they, no mascara. No make up. Make down. Everything ran down. Came down in the face. And she stood like this. I'm healed. I can walk. Suddenly hear a scream. I can see, I can see. I was blind when I came. I can see now. And revival started. That's how that church started. That's how church started. And I can tell you today, that church has 10,000 members. It started just by a miracle. By Bambi on ice. We are not strong in ourselves. Monica, you were there. You remember this. And you, you remember also five years later right, when I was in Kleiper and Lithuania and other Baltic states and a lady came and said, I'm from Armenia. I was in your meeting five years ago in that big sport palace. Do you remember me? I said, no. It was 10,000 like you. And everywhere, it, was, it was dark there. My son was paralyzed in legs and arms. But Jesus healed him. And now he can walk. Do you want to see him? I said, yes. And I see a seven-year-old boy coming, running up to me and hit me in the face like this. You know. <laughs> it was Star Wars. <laughs> I said, hit me again, please. And he did. I said, why? These arms were paralyzed five years before. Now they can hit the preacher. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. But what I'm saying to you is, don't have a mediocre Christian life. There's an adventure to be a Christian. To come to church every Sunday. And I want to encourage you on the internet. Come to church on Sunday. Be a part of the family here. Be, church for me is not a hobby. This is my life. I, I, my wife and I, we love to, to build the, the church. We, we go to every youth camp home. We are the grandfather. I was chosen to be the grandfather of the church. Now, a funny title. But we are there with the young people. I went to the five year a few weeks ago, preached to them about mission. And I said, do you know what a missionary is? And one little girl said, yes, that's a, that's a man who don't want to work. <laughs> oh, not really. I want to work. Okay. Did your mama, mother tell you that? Yes. Oh. What's the name of your mother? <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's a life exciting in Jesus. This is not a long sermon. It's a very short one. But when you see the bold people of the Bible, David went to Goliath, bold like a lion. 
He was young. He had no experience. He was, uh, he had lion and bear he had defeated, but no Goliath. When we come against that man, he was running towards him. Faith and boldness always run. And, and I like boldness. I like Christian boldness. And I, if you have been hit by fear, if you have been hit like I, I cannot, I feel f- afraid to do this, I feel afraid to do this. Fear is a demon. It wants to destroy and paralyze your life. But today, I offer you another way, and that'd be bold. You know, if you don't have boldness, will you pray for boldness? If you don't have, pre- you feel weak right now, God can give you strength today. God can re- renew the strength like the eagles, the w- new wings like the eagles. The Bible says young men can be tired. We see a situation in Sweden today where so many young girls and young boys have unhealthy psych life. They, they, they're mentally very sick. But they have everything. They have everything. But they don't have the power of God. Today, God wants to touch and hold generation. And we're not going to be famous for mental illness. We're going to be famous for you being strong in God. God shall bring up strong people. Monica, why don't you come up and take a microphone and help me to pray. We're going to go down for landing. The Bible says, short, blessed are the preachers who preach short sermons. They shall be invited back. So, so we, we want to, to pray for you. Let's stand up on our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's close our eyes. Maybe you are here in this room now. And you have not invited Jesus into your heart yet. You're, you're not committed to be a Christian. But today, you can become a Christian. You can be born again can give your life to Jesus right where you're standing right now he's knocking on your door he has plans he has future for you so wherever you are as we close our eyes and you want to give your life to Christ let's lift your hand right now where you are lift lift your hand up God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you. God bless you there. God bless you. So beautiful to see hands going up. I'm going to pray pray for you. I want you to just keep on lifting your hands. I want to say, just say after me, Father God in heaven, I come to you. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And right now, I invite Jesus Christ into my heart into my life Jesus I love you I want to be a child of God thank you Jesus that you love me and you have forgiven me in Jesus name welcome to Jesus today is right now it's 1035 that was the minute you received Jesus this Sunday morning. You are now a child of God. Congratulations. Let's give them a big hand as they pray. <laughs> Monica. I want my wife Monica to pray for, if you need prayer for something, just lift up your hands. If there is things in your mind, in your body, whatever. Monica, let you pray now. Oh, Father. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to talk about you, to show our love to you, Father. And I thank you for all that you have given us. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the word of encouragement, Father. And now we lift up these people that reach to you for help. Father, maybe they are sick. Maybe they are need in other areas in their life, Father. But we know that you are the prayer answering God. We know that you have heard the heart that asks for help. The heart that reaches out for you, Father. And we thank you. And we thank you for the, for the answer of prayer. And we will rejoice, Father, for we, because we know who you are. Our Father that has given and want to continue to give, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. And Pastor Anthony, thank you. 
Polenska be here with you. We love you. I know. We love you too. Madeline. Awesome. God bless Come on, give it up for Pastor Carl and for Monica. Awesome. You know, wasn't that a great message? Be bold in your prayers. You know, I was just thinking about, you know, so often we come to the Father's house and, and God is saying, whatever you want, you can take. And we leave with our own teaspoon or mixer. Uh, maybe you're here today and you gave your life to Jesus or you're here and you say, man, I just need someone to stand with, someone to, to pray for me. At the end of the service, we're going to have a prayer team up here and they all have little red bags. And for every one of you that raised your hand to receive Jesus today, uh, would you just do one thing? We really want to help you uh, just to start off and grow in your newfound faith. We want to welcome you to the family. If you would, you know, after the worship team, is the worship team going to have a song? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, after the worship team sings one last song, uh, you're welcome to come on up and just get one of these red bags. There's a, it's, it's full of money. And uh, let's see how many red bags go out this week now. It's, uh, it's a New Testament, some great things that will help you. We're so excited about the journey that you just started today. And you know what? It's lived out in community. And uh, hey, that sign's been on the back screen all morning. Welcome home. You know what? You are in God's house. And everything that God has is for you. He's got so much more for you. Please don't just walk out of here with a teaspoon or a mixer. You can have it all because Christ paid for it. It's yours. And he wants your life to be blessed. He wants you to go forward. And so, uh, hey, uh, come on. Let's give it up for Carl Gustav one more time. It was a great message. Worship team, come on up. Oh, you're up here. All right, we're going to do one last song, and then, uh, hey, why don't you look at your neighbor and say, this was great. I'd love to buy you a croissant. And then you can say, I'll teach you some Swedish. Say, hey do allihopa. Okay, that means goodbye to everybody. Come on, one song, and then we're going to go. Bless you. All right, guys. So before we send you out, let's sing this song out with boldness. life an eternal spark I call you healer cause you can mend any broken heart I call you faithful father you finish everything you start my soul was made to respond I know you by a thousand names and you deserve Every single one, you've given me a million ways to be amazed at what you've done, and I am lost in wonder at all you do. I know you by a thousand names, and I'll sing them back to you, Jesus. Sing it all back, sing it all back.
day don't be so fast. Go grab a coffee, go grab a soda. See you out there. Take care. Trust and I gave you everything that you need. But you only told me lies and you made me realize that, babe, you ain't no good for me. I can't be with you, you can't be true.